the last person. I, I couldn't even do it. Okay. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Shuttle Drive. I'm your host, Wade Harrison, and today I have my buddy from across the pond, Miss Sal Montgomery. I've been wanting to talk to her for a while. We have a lot of mutual friends, and I've been hearing this name a lot. So finally, I get to chat with you, Sal. How's it going? Oh, real good. Awesome to be finally chatting to you. I've also heard loads about you as well, so good to finally put a face to the name. Well... I hope the well. Never mind. I won't say that. But um, <laughs> yeah. So how's it how's it going over there in the UK? Did you get some paddling in today? Yeah, it's all good. Uh, it's the summer here, uh, so we don't get a lot of rain during the summer. So we we're pretty reliant on the white water courses, but we do get the odd freak storm, uh, which okay. we all get super excited for. Uh, what, but otherwise, it's like white water courses. What part of the the UK are you currently in right now? Um, so I'm in the southwest in a place called Bristol. Um, but I spend a lot of my time over in Devon or Wales because that's where a lot of the good rivers are. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, Wales. Yeah. That's where my buddy Snowy's from. Oh. He's from yeah. He's, he's yeah, in Wales the... is awesome. It's got a bit of everything over there. Is it the Monkey Islands? Do they call them the Monkey Islands? Not that I've heard of. <laughs> that's what he told me. Maybe they do. I've had a lot of time out the UK and maybe they do. <laughs> and he also, uh, they, they have their own language there. They have like their own type of language, right? Yeah, they do. Uh, I know nothing. Like, <laughs> not, not a very easy language. What's very your uh, what? It. What's your current like uh, whitewater course that you like the most right now? Um, I guess I've been spending a lot of time at a place called the Treron, which is in North Wales. Um, partly because I have quite a few paddling friends over there, and also it's probably one of our whitewater co whitewater courses that most uh, like resembles a natural river. Like they've okay. only it a little bit, and it's a dam release, uh, so it feels a bit less artificial than some of our other courses. So it's pretty good fun. A lot of freestyle spots or like downriver stuff. Uh, the Treron, not so much because it, it can be. It's like quite shallow in a lot of spots, so it's um it's real fun for like a slicey boat or like a, a river play kind of boat. Um, but freestyle, I'd probably go to Home Pier Punt. That's pretty good for um for uh, freestyle and play boating. Slicey boat, and you mentioned slicey boat. Um, I heard that the UK people just don't like the slicey boats as much as they do the the spud um, boats. Is that true? Uh, I think they're getting way more popular. Uh, I think we're we're perhaps a little bit behind the times, but definitely seeing more and more of them. And me myself, I I spend more time in my slicey boats than a proper creek boat. Anymore. What What's your current slicey boat right now? Uh, I don't know if you'd even consider it slicey, but for me, <laughs> go ahead, tell me what is it. Uh, I've been spending quite a lot of time in the ozone lately, um, uh, yeah. and prior to that was the Ripper. Does that count as slicey? No, no, those are not <laughs> slicey boats. Okay, the well, compared to my 9R, they're pretty slicey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, um, so, like the low-key, like the low-key. Oh, okay, yeah, maybe as uh, UK paddlers are not quite on it as you guys know. I don't... I can't remember the last time I saw a Loki over here. <laughs> exactly. It's it's weird. Um, here in the southeast, I'm in the southeast United States, and the, the they're full slice, you know, they're full slice boats and, you know, all the old school type boats. But even the Loki is a very good boat here. And, and I just heard that they just didn't sail well in the UK or anywhere over in Europe. They just don't. It's kind of like the long boats. Like there's two things. Like the long boats don't sell very well over there, and the 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 full slice don't sell very. Is that true? Yeah, I think so. Like you you see the odd ones. Like particularly, you just mentioned the long boats. You see the odd one, but you notice it because it's quite rare. Um, and yeah, I guess maybe it's to do with the style of white water that we have over here. Um, but yeah, definitely not as much as over in the states. I don't think. So do you have a twelve R? No. See, I told you. What about a Scorch X? Oh, I too small for a 12R. <laughs> no, just add some seat pads in it. You got a Scorch X. Have you paddled the Scorch X? No, I've got a Scorch Small. Oh, okay. Well, uh, speaking of Scorch Small, what are you, yeah. um, you're one of the first uh, to get one of the Scorch Small. Well, you're one of the first that I've seen on the internet that has this. I've I seen your little walkthrough. I guess that was in the factory, right? Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm pretty good at annoying people. Uh, so when Matt from Piranha said that um, he'd let me know as soon as the first one came out of the oven, I basically was just hassling him all day, every day until it was ready. Um, but yeah, I picked it up, um, oh, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago now or so. Um, and yeah, been loving it. It's been awesome. What, what, do you what did you currently paddle? 
Um, I was mostly in the Ripper. Um, so that was kind of my go-to for river running was uh, in the Ripper. Small? Then, yeah, yeah, okay. small Ripper. Um, and then prior to that, I was really into the 9R2, which I still have, but um, it's like a little bit overkill for a lot of our rivers here during the summer. Yeah. Um, and then alongside the Scorch at the moment, I'm trying to spend a bit more time in the Ozone to um, just trying to work on some skills and get a little bit more a yeah. bit more playful and stuff too. Yeah, I like the Ozone. The Ozone was a, is a pretty, pretty good boat. That's I would consider that a three-quarter slice. Okay, I'm getting closer then. <laughs> I don't know how to break that down into metric, but um, whatever. <laughs> yeah, and the fun thing about the ozone is that I absolutely suck in it. Uh, so it's been quite fun trying to suck less. Um, oh, well, I don't know. Yeah, it's I, still pretty you, awful. <laughs> you had a Jed at one point, right? Yeah, I still got my Jed. Yeah, there I, you I, go. I paddled that in Nottingham quite a lot. Yeah. yeah that's been fun. I, I really like the stern squirt. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can stern squirt the the ozone. The, it has a very easily stern squirtable stern on it. Wow. Well, or you call it a telly? Do you call it a telly? I, I, I call it squirting. Okay. Um, <laughs> I like that better than telly. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, it stern stalls, but uh, I, to be honest, I I suck at that quite a bit too. Ah. Uh, so that's been something I've been trying to work on this summer, and it's kind of one of my little like personal projects at the moment is to get better at it. Okay. Um, yeah, it's kind of getting there slowly, but. Yeah. So coming um, back on the Scorch Small, coming out of the, you came out of the Ripper Small. What do you, how, what do you compare the Scorch to? I mean, what, what's your first initial impressions of it? Um. So when I first saw it, I, it was bigger than I'd expected, and I was a, bit, a little bit disappointed. I was like, oh, maybe this is going to be a bit big for me, a bit like bigger than what I wanted. Uh, and then I outfitted it. Um, and took it on the river and was actually really pleasantly surprised because um, obviously once you outfit something as well like it mm -hmm. never seems quite so big anymore because uh, that's usually the issue for me is things are generally on the bigger side for me and I get a bit swamped um, but what I really like about the Scorch is that you've got that kind of solid chargey feel of like mm -hmm. a big creek boat a bit like when I'm in my 9R but with the maneuverability and the um, like the playfulness and just being able to kind of put the boat where you want it, like you would in a ripper, uh, it just feels like super easy to move around and really free. Um, and yeah, like I usually suck at surfing my creek boat, um, <laughs> but I'm finding it quite easy in the scorch. And it's just super nice to paddle, like really fun. Um, and yeah, just really maneuverable while still being pretty solid. Did you, um, when you, when you outfit it, did you have to add any seat pad to it or? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm about five two. Um, so as soon as I get in a boat, it's just like a bathtub. Uh, so I think I've got uh, either two or three seat pads. Oh, wow. Okay. Because yeah. I paddled the medium scorch and I felt it set really low on me. It's mm. just, I think it's just the design of their seat and how their cockpit rims lifted. It felt like it, it was way too low for me. I added a seat pad in it too. Yeah, um, I, it's quite the norm for me. I tend to always add at least a couple of seat pads because I am pretty short. But yeah, otherwise the cockpit does seem quite high on me. And I, I just feel like I'm paddling a bathtub and I'm probably going to hit it with my, my paddle and just, yeah. <laughs> just, do, you, uh, do you think it, it do you think it would replace your, uh, your 9R2? Yeah, yeah, I think so. You think so? Why yeah. You? Yeah, because yeah. I did the nine R two not feel big on you. Um, again, initially when when you first get that shell and things, but I, I, I although I hate outfitting, I, I now religiously uh, like spend two or three hours outfitting every new wow. boat. I, <laughs> That's a long time. <laughs> yeah, I I'm know. like I'm like fifteen minutes tops, and I'm done. I'm and like I I'm hate good. It. I'm like the angriest person ever, but what I do now is I, uh, so I go to the Piranha factory, go and get it. And I spend some time with the guys there and like socialize whilst outfitting it and just get it as good as possible whilst I'm there. And then obviously I tweak it once I get to the river. Yeah. Um, but I find I, I do it all there and then so that it's pretty much ready because otherwise I just don't do it. I'm like, oh, it'll be fine. And then I have a really crap time on the river because I'm like, oh, I'm too loose and I'm moving around and I can't get the boat to do what I want and stuff. So I now like force myself to get. I could see that. Then, yeah. I've done that too. I've, I've been just excited to get a boat and I just take yeah. it and go. And then I'm flopping around. I'm, my feet aren't pushing on the bulkhead. It's just aggravating. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. yeah then yeah, I have I to take it home. Good. That's pretty good. That, um, so, so you're liking the small scorch. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. 
You're yeah. you're one of the first yeah. ones out there. They're definitely. I've got a lot of friends here in the USA that's really excited to get in the small. Uh, yeah. For whatever reason, Piranha. You know, they kind of went large first, medium, and then Scorch X, and then they're waiting on the small. So. Yeah, and, and I always give them a hard time about this because they always make us short people wait forever. As you say, it's like always kind of like the medium, the large, the extra large, and then some way down the line, <laughs> eventually the small people get sorted out. <laughs> what did, um, because you used to paddle the, the Waka boats, right? You used to paddle a lot of uh, the, the, the tuna. The what was the what? The Tutea. The Tutea and the, the, the Veloc? Veloc? Yeah, the Veloc. Uh, That's the Z one. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. You, so you like that now that Veloc, Veloc, right? Is that how you say that? That's a small boat. I actually seen one and I was like, wow, that is a small boat. Yeah, it was my first like proper river boat really. And mm -hmm. I think at the time it was really great for me because I wasn't very strong to start with. Um and I think I tried the burn initially when I first started paddling rivers and I really burn didn't one. like it. There's like five of them. The uh, one. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know, maybe number two, but okay. I didn't like it. And I'm sorry for on it, but I no, you can't game. have all winners. You can't yeah, have everything. Fun. Can't be a winner. <laughs> yeah. I just I felt like a, I was in a bathtub, um, and obviously some of it is skill because I was still pretty new to it. But then when I got in the Velik, the much smaller boat, I found that I could control it. I could move it around easier and stuff. And I kept with it for a good couple of years and really loved it. Um, and I think as I got stronger and I started paddling kind of harder, like bigger stuff, I think I outgrew it a little bit. So it was, it was perfect for that time. Um, but mm -hmm. I think if I got in it now, it would feel tiny. <laughs> yeah, you probably wanted more volume. You started paddling bigger volume rivers. And yeah. that's when it. That's when I find that, okay, the lower volume boats, I'm like, I'll go to a large a lot of times, even though I'm, I feel really good in a lot of the mediums. Then I go, when I get on a big volume river, I want in that large boat. I'm like, yeah. this just feels small. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, the kind of changing point as well was, um, my first trip to Asia, I went to Nepal and started doing like my first multi days. Um, and in a, a boat like the Velik, um, although I was paddling, it, it felt nice to paddle. I had no space to take any of my like overnight gear and stuff. Yeah. Um, even that in itself, I kind of needed something a bit bigger because I was starting to do bits of guiding and safety kayaking and stuff. So I, I needed to be able to carry more gear. Really. Yeah. On that, for the people listening, you definitely have a lot of traveling. You or you used to anyway. How about that? In the past, you traveled a lot. I don't. <laughs> no, well, it's not out of your choice. I know how I know how the world is right now. I you'd be traveling right now, but um, yeah, because that's I, I was looking at you know your Instagram and and you basically you took a trip where you did like something in Russia, right? What was the name of the 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 spot in Russia? Um, so I've been to Russia twice, but the most recent time was actually between lockdown one and two last year. Um, they didn't so, keep you in Russia? Were you locked uh, down in Russia? Uh, no, but, although I wish they had. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to leave. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, we were super lucky, lucky. We were meant to go at the beginning of the year. And uh, so it got postponed twice and cancelled. Mm -hmm. Didn't think it was going to happen, but we were super lucky um, and ended up going um, around now, actually, this time last year. And we went to a place called Kamchatka, which is on the very eastern side okay. of Russia, on the peninsula. Um, and yeah, had an epic adventure, um, which yeah, I would always be appreciative of, but especially during a year where adventure was uh, pretty restricted and yeah. a bit <laughs> how you, challenging. How do you spell that Kamchaka again? Uh, K A M. K A M. I was spelling it K U M. <laughs> uh, no, K A M. C H A T. Yeah, the, the um. But yeah, go ahead. So, so what were you saying? Um, just how I was super appreciative and I'm always really appreciative for anywhere I get to experience and all these kind of cool opportunities that I've had. Like, I'm always super grateful that it was especially so last year because obviously here in the UK, things weren't weren't going so well. Yeah. <laughs> it was off the tables, adventures and, and even just time outdoors was pretty limited. Um yeah, there it is. There it is. Like a fish. So <laughs> we were at the, pretty much at the very bottom there. So I pulled it up, and for everybody listening, it's uh, so Russia obviously is a very big country. Kamchatka Peninsula is way over, kind of close to Alaska. It looks like, right? Yeah, yeah, super far east. That uh, is that very far east. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I can confirm that it's very wild and remote there too. <laughs> Yeah, so so tell me about your experience over there. Were you guiding? You did like something with um like a guy. You were guiding like a yeah. crew, right? Um, so a friend of mine is a wildlife and like adventure TV presenter. He's called Steve, uh, Steve Backshall. Um, okay. And I've been fortunate enough now to be on a couple of his trips where we're exploring new rivers in areas that aren't very well known, uh, and the river itself has never been explored. Um, and we are using the exploration of that river mm -hmm. to also um, kind of explore and, and um, share with viewers the, the environment there too. So um, usually it's around kind of the wildlife in that area. Um, and there's nearly always like an environmental angle. So uh, an environmental message that we're trying to get across yeah. through, the, through the story of an adventure. Now, now you say the wildlife over there, so I'm guessing there's like brown bear. Are there any polar bears? Uh, no polar bears, but lots oh. and lots of brown bears. <laughs> <laughs> the brown bears. You were talking about um, an experience with a brown bear that was just like a few meters away from you. like. Yeah, um, our, pretty much our very first rapids, I came around the corner because I was, I was leading the group. Um, and I could hear that there was a, a rapid coming up. I could hear the white water. Uh, and as I came around the corner and was just starting to try and look over this horizon line, there was a, a bear right beside me. Um, but the water was flowing and the team was behind me. So in I the eddy? Uh, yeah, in the eddy. Um, but I had to try and not focus on him because the <clears throat> guys were <laughs> relying on me to find them a route. Um, but as I came to the horizon line, I saw another bear uh, in the eddy right, on the eddy uh, in the, on the right there. Uh, so yeah, it, it's definitely uh, quite challenging to to focus completely on the rapid uh, when you're surrounded by so many bears. Were, was it, are they aggressive? Were they aggressive towards people? Could you no, tell? No, we we uh, we were really fortunate in that, and I think part of it is that um, that particular area they they're not used to seeing humans. So I think they hadn't. I don't know how to word this, but they hadn't associated humans with danger as such. Yeah. Um, well, they might be more scared of you than you are of them at that yeah. point. Uh, generally, their their expressions would be kind of one of like curiosity and intrigue of like, what are these things <clears throat> in these big, brightly colored plastic boats? Yeah. Um, and they, they'd kind of focus on us for a few moments and then run away. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a, oh, what a, I guess their their primary food food source is just the 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 salmon, right? Yeah, the, the yeah. fish. Mm -hmm. That's probably their only because they're either like like deer and moose and all that up there, or what? And there were uh, we a lot lot fewer uh, a lesser number. Um, I'd say particularly uh, the salmon, but also um, higher up, um, there was also um, a lot of bears feeding on the berries. Oh, the bears. Berries and yeah. salmon. That seems uh, their favorites. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't blame them. I like salmon too. And berries. Yeah. So what boat were you in? What what, what kayak were you paddling? Uh, well, this was last year. So I was in the 9R2 last year. Okay. All right. What What's the rapids like? Were they like very, was it big water? Yeah, pretty big volume. So a uh, majority of the team were in, um, Steve was in a Macno, um, with it just being a little bit more stable, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more forgiving. Um, and then I think the rest of us were all in nine R twos. Uh, one person was in a burn actually, but uh, yeah. How were the rapids? Were they like pretty stout, like class mm. five the whole way or like? No, it was quite, um, and I, I shouldn't go into too much detail cause this, the show hasn't come out yet, but, um, Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought this was already out on like PBS or something. No, not yet. But... <laughs> Some of the previous ones were... Well, like, spoiler like, alert, everybody fast forward because Sal's about to tell me the entire production. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> no, because your your main focus of going there was like, because it's becoming more tourist area, right? And they're wanting to build, are they, is it... There was a few like environmental issues that were kind of being discussed and things. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there was a, a few different kind of conversation points um, and messages coming across in this was place. that one of the coolest like trips you've had what, what tell me what the, the like one of the like where you're like wow i know they're all great i know you're gonna say they're all fun <laughs> you know you just go down to the where or is that what it's called a where a where oh, where you weir? yeah a weir <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, you just go down there and you're like, oh, that's fun. Um, so where's where's like the 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 most like epic like spot you've paddled? Um, if you if you loved adventure and that feeling of being in somewhere so wild and remote, and you know that it's only you and your team, and you've got no idea what's downstream, and you don't know what the next few days are gonna gonna mm -hmm. hold, then I would say Kamchatka for sure. Uh, that wow, was that mm. yeah, that was definitely. Are you good. saying that just because you've got a documentary coming out? In a few weeks? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. I thought prior to this trip, I thought I'd been to some pretty remote places, uh, but this like definitely stood out. Now th that's remoteness. I mean, looking at it, I because I just looked at the map and I'm like, wow, that's like, is that like Siberia? Is that like that's the other? That's even farther east than Siberia. Yeah. So. Um, Obviously, there's, there's some p parts of uh, Kamchatka that are more populated. It's still mm -hmm. not massive numbers, but they are more populated. Um, but even from kind of a, a relatively small town, we were um, a good few hours helicopter ride away from those. And the majority of that, we didn't see any buildings or people or, or anything, really, only bears. You just, um, you're off the grid completely yeah, you're yeah. off the planet basically over there yeah. how now it, does it get like the super super cold like it does in some parts like negative uh, 52 in the winter or something i think it, it probably would um we went in the fall um so it was like that really nice kind of crisp crisp sunshine but still, like pretty chilly still we're still in our dry suits uh, and our spray decks and things will be frozen in the morning uh, as always, like like everyone says, been, like everywhere you go has something really cool about it. It does, yeah. Um, and if if you're looking for kind of wild and remote, that definitely like serves that up. Uh, whereas if you're someone that wants to kind of uh, park and herc or or kind of get as as much paddling in per day mm -hmm. as possible, then you probably would go somewhere a little bit less, uh, like a bit more accessible. Um, and maybe some more simple kind of logistics. Yeah, the Kamchatka um, Peninsula, huh? Well, mm -hmm. I'll I'll um I'll put that down on my list. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's looking at it, it's not going to be cheap. I'm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You can fly a helicopter, then you'll be okay. Yeah, let me just skip. Yeah, I'll I'll fly from Alaska. How about that? It looks like I'd probably be shorter flying from Alaska, actually. <laughs> did you fly into like Moscow or something? How did you yeah. uh, logistics? Yeah, Moscow and then um, Kronotsky. And then and then you just got on a small helicopter and flew across, right? Wow, that mm -hmm. had to. In normal circumstances, I enjoy that anyway. I think that's like just makes it feel like such an adventure, and it's you and your team, uh, and no one else. Kind of, you're all reliant on each other. Um, but particularly last year, um, obviously the the situation in the UK uh, was pretty difficult. Um, and yeah, like we were in lockdown after lockdown, you, you could barely even go to the supermarket, like things were really full on. And for people that are used to being outdoors so much, like probably like yourself, I normally oh, yeah. barely inside. I'm, I'm never wearing shoes. I'm well, like never <clears throat> in shoes and stuff. Like, so just Start going me. freaking crazy. Yeah, we <laughs> suddenly in lockdown in a city center back in my, like in the UK. Uh, for what we thought would be a couple of weeks, and then it pretty much turned into a year, um, <laughs> to be able to have that opportunity to escape for a few weeks. Now, do you uh, speak Russian? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I, everywhere I go, I try to... I try to do they speak Kamchukin? Kamchukin over there? Uh, <laughs> they've got, like, each area has their own, um, you know, that local kind of language, like their own variation of Russian. How were they? Uh, did you have to get permission from the like Putin or anything? Like um, you... the the whole permissions and visas was an absolute nightmare. See, that's uh, probably another area where I bet it costs some money. Somebody forked up some money for those. <laughs> <laughs> How were the? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine because uh, yeah, to just go out there, you know, I bet you had to get several permits or whatever, like permission from the yeah, Russian government. That was another reason why, like we just genuinely didn't think it was gonna so happen. many things working against us at the time that it was it was quite difficult because um myself and steve um steve has been kayaking for a long time mm -hmm. uh, i think he started as a scout but because of his career and it, his um, family life and things he doesn't have a lot of time to dedicate to training um and we knew that this expedition would more than likely be the the toughest white water he'd ever paddled 
Um, and as I said, we're out in the middle of nowhere. There's not really any room for error. Um, so we, despite not knowing if we'd actually make the trip or not, if we'd end up going, uh, we, we basically dedicated our spring and summer with training towards something that we didn't actually know if it would happen or not. So Yeah, but the training's added- fun, right? So, so training's yeah. just kayaking. <laughs> That's what I do when I when a race is coming up. It's like, how do you train for a race? I don't know. I just go kayaking a lot. <laughs> so even if I don't end up racing, well, hey, I got I got weeks of kayaking that was fun. Even yeah. if it's out on flat water, I was just out paddling. Yeah. Yeah, oh, but we didn't have a lot of rain, so we were pretty much just driving to white water courses every day and <clears throat> yeah, that could get... white water courses each day. But we, we trained as much as we as we tried to kind of vary things as much as we can what we could and like kind of get as much variance in there as we could uh, with quite limited options but yeah, yeah so it, it was quite like that so that all just added to why it felt such uh, an amazing thing to be able to go because we'd been training for it for months now. on whitewater courses yeah <laughs> <laughs> You, you get out in the eddy and get you get you a tea or something and then get right back in and paddle off yeah so yeah that's that's pretty good uh yeah, just training on one jumping in and rescue training and like obviously we're all reliant on each other and even though steve would consider himself one of the weaker members of the group it's still mm-hmm. just important that he knows how to rescue us mm. and to exactly it's important for you <laughs> yeah i know I, <laughs> It's like having a throw rope. The throw rope ain't doing me any good. It does you the good. I'm, I'm like throwing it to the, you. If you arrange to go paddling with someone and they forget their throw bag, I'm like, you can borrow mine. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what, what are you going to use? I'll be like, I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah. So where, where will people be able to see this? Um, so here in the UK, um, I know that previous um, series have been on uh, the BBC and UK TV. Okay. Um, and at, over in the States, it was on the PBS channel. When will it be aired? Do you know? Um, I believe it's <clears throat> going to be in the next, um, like, four to eight weeks. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll keep an eye for that because I, I have PBS. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, you sent me you sent me a couple of links, but they were just kind of like um, like trailers, right? They were just premiered. Yeah, just they would, yeah. yeah. Just, kind of give you a bit of an idea of, of the trip it looks great so everybody listen watch for that what's it going to be called um expedition with steve Backshaw. expedition, expedition. with steve Backshaw. he's the yeah. guy that you were telling me about that he doesn't have a ton of whitewater experience right yeah kind of he's he's done a fair bit over the years but it's been quite spread out because mm-hmm. um his um like his tv show series for instance is loads of different sports so one month he might be doing some epic climb somewhere or, you know, mm. or he's um, like quite well known for his diving and things. So he's doing loads of cool stuff, but it's not like always kind Is he like Bear G- Grylls? Bear Grylls type guy? Uh, not like in the adventure sense, probably. Um, really? But I think Steve is more known for like the wildlife. Um, and yeah. Okay. More documentary kind of style, style, right? More of yeah, like a documentary with, like, style. He kind of uses adventure to kind of tell the stories and, and to kind of um like share information about yeah. the and things. did you have a helicopter following you the whole time would no you didn't no, we weren't that fancy <laughs> yeah that that's a little posh yeah, <laughs> we did scout the river with one day so that was pretty cool no oh, okay <laughs> did you um you mentioned something you had like a like a like a ranger like a park ranger or something like yeah, the, yeah. a local this was a local for the area or the where you were at I probably can't go into too much more detail. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. We don't want to spoil it. Damn it, Sal. I'm dying to know this. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm in trouble if I tell any more about it. Yeah, just, um, yeah, just kind of like brief over it. No, I get that. Yeah. What kind of, we'll get onto your gear. I know you paddle a lot with the Peak UK. I guess that's your life vest and all that. What kind of paddle do you uh, use mostly? Uh, paddle, I just use Werner's. Uh, I've used Werner's for years and years. It's kind of that like old trusty, isn't it? It is old faithful, baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what uh, what what model? Small shaft. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a sticking. Is it foam core? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you look at it every day. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering on on the blade size if you like a bigger, larger blade or a smaller blade. Yeah, I think um. 
I think it's the Stikina. I always go for the small shaft if I can. Mm. Uh, it's not always like, sometimes they're like, oh, it's several months wait for one, so it's fine. I just go without. But if there's an option for it, I'll go for it. Um, and yeah, uh, blade size, it's that balance, isn't it? I remember a few years ago, I went for a blade that was too big and I, I kept getting shoulder injuries and elbow mm -hmm. issues and stuff. So I think maybe it was a bit too big for me. Yeah, you're um, probably using the sticking or the... Yeah, I think or, it is the sticking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's foam core, it's probably the sticking. I can't remember what their smaller, um, their fiberglass one is. Yeah. What about um, what about your vest? What kind of vest do you rock right now? Uh, so I paddle Peak UK. Uh, so I use their River Guide vest. because It's, got it's called the River Guide? I yeah. don't know anything. Like, I don't know much about their, um, their yeah, gear. Yeah, I don't think, um, like... A lot of my American friends don't have a lot of PQK gear. Is it called um, a buoyancy aid? Yeah. <laughs> <A> buoyancy aid. <laughs> it's called the buoyancy aid. Yeah. This one, yeah, right? So, yeah. So it has um, like the guide belt on there, like the safety harness. I like that color. Yeah. It's super, they've done the last couple of years, done loads of nice, like colorful kit, which is pretty cool. Wow. And, that. Uh, the thing I like about these uh, buoyancy aids is. Um, they have like really big pockets so you can get loads of safety gear and snacks and stuff in. The they're pockets really in the good. front. Mm, they're quite good if you've got like quite a long torso, which I don't, but. I can see good. that. The the cut right here. Mm, what I'm, I what, quite for, like that. Yeah. You know, some boys the age, they're kind of round and fat and they kind of get in the way of you leaning forward and stuff. These ones are like Do, long and thin. Wow, that, Yeah. I like the looks of that vest. I just pulled it up and looked at it online. Um, it looks like it comes in two colors, like a, <clears throat> I don't know what this, it's a teal looking color, right? Oh, the blue one. I guess you'd be calling it blue. <laughs> it, it looks teal and red to me. I like those colors. Those colors yeah, look nice. Yeah. No. They're super nice. Yeah. Uh, Peak's been, hey, do you run a toe tether on it? No. You don't, you don't use a, what, do you call it a toe tether or do you call it a cow tail? Uh, we call it, um, what's it, a cow, a cow tail. And you don't use one? No, some of my friends do, but I don't personally. Um, Why is that? Uh, for a couple of reasons, I guess, like. Uh, it's one of those kind of controversial things anyway, isn't it? Some I know, that's why I'm bringing it up, because I, I catch a lot of heat on these cow tail toe yeah, tailors, because yeah. I don't use them. I don't like them. I don't use them, but I yeah. get it. If he, I don't, I mean, I don't knock it if you want to use it. I just like talking to, like, really good paddlers like yourself. Every time I talk to a good paddler, they're like, oh, I don't use them, unless I'm instructing <laughs> and just like that. So well, what? Some of my friends do, uh, particularly the ones that are guiding, and they, like some of them might say, oh, I just tend to use them on like the easier rivers. Um, mm -hmm. I guess for me, I in the past have done quite a lot of safety kayaking work where I basically was just chasing swimmers all day every day. Um, <laughs> and I I don't really like being that attached to something, especially if it's full of water and like it's pulling me back. And so what I tend to do is in my buoyancy age, kind of um, I have it zigzagged and pushed down. So that I and it's got a carabiner on the top, so I pull out the carabiner, clip it to the grab handle, and it's a loop sling. So I put my my arm through the loop mm -hmm. sling and paddle with it coming behind me. Me too. And then <laughs> if for some reason it's like pulling me back or anything happens, I can literally take my hand off the paddle. It comes off my shoulder and it's gone, and I'm free and independent. Maybe part of it is like what you're used to and what you were taught and stuff. Like I know when I first started running rivers and things a lot of the, the guys I was paddling with didn't use cow tails so maybe that plays part into it of like I've not kind of grown up with them as such yeah uh, but then I know lots of friends that um are not from the UK that have always paddled with them uh, so I guess it's just if you're going to use them just being careful with them yeah and, and that was that was my biggest thing was just using it properly yeah and I think that's a big bit like a lot of kayaking accidents quite uh, like when they're related to equipment and things it's when we've perhaps not made the best decisions with them or use them in like a less than ideal situation yeah yeah and just being super used to your gear and stuff what's your next trip coming up uh well i'm hoping... is this secret too can you not tell me uh, sal no, you're like i can't no. talk about it until after <laughs> <laughs> no. i'll bleep it out if you want i'll beep every time you say it no no secrets um, normally in the winters, I spend pretty much the whole winter in South America normally, but obviously last year that couldn't happen. Okay. Um, so I'm really hoping that this year I can. Um, I've got lots of friends that live over there. I obviously, um, South, 
when you say South America, Chile, Ecuador, what? Yeah, what? yeah, probably Chile and Ecuador. Okay. Um, there was talk of a, a couple of other places too, um, but at the moment, pretty much all of them are still on the red list for us here in the UK. Um, so I'm kind of seeing how the next few weeks go. Um, if if I can't, then I'll make the most of it. I'll, I'll paddle here in the UK. We have pretty good rivers here in the winter anyway, so I'll make the most of it, but everything's rain fed over there so it's all or dam control are there a lot of dam controls uh there's a couple of good rivers up in scotland that are dam controlled but the, all the best rivers really are, are river fed um so yeah so there's definitely good stuff to do it's just um it's just it's a bit difficult to get consistent paddling in because mm. you're relying on rainstorms and you never quite know if the river's going to come in or not and so you can end up with a lot of weekends where you thought you'd be paddling, but you're not paddling and stuff. That's that's the advantage here in the southeast where I'm at is, you know, it's it's kind of like a double-edged sword type thing. You don't want them to dam rivers up, but because yeah. there's so many of them here in the southeast, we have something to paddle every weekend. You name it. it I mean, the list goes on and on that runs spring summer and fall because you mentioned about what the best time to come to the usa and i would almost suggest kind of around the fall honestly because mm. then you're going to get a lot of like like right now we've been having a lot of rain and it's the same way when it rains obviously we're all trying to find the best run for the the rain fed. is that and that, is that how it is in the uk is it mostly like tight creeks like creaky type stuff yeah yeah <clears throat> They're, they're mostly kind of your lower volume rivers. Like I guess uh, even the Brits have got a bit of a reputation when it comes to like low volume rivers. Well, but, that's the um, southeast for you. Yeah, yeah, I've heard the same. <laughs> the mank? <laughs> Do you call it the mank? <laughs> yeah, there are some that I would describe as the mank or choss. Do you know the word choss? Chuff? Choss. No, I've not heard the choff. Uh, like, you know if a river was really manky, you'd be like, oh, that was really chossy. And it's when it's like, yeah, it's when it's like rocky and gross and like borderline whether you're having fun or not. Like <laughs> it's chossy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, that's a new one. That's a new one on me. No, I've not heard that. But we would just say that it's real manky. Yeah, that yeah, it's like you. lower volume or the rocks are really sharp and you're just banging on things and it's yeah. still fun, but you're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we um, have a few of those here, but then we we also have some really cool stuff too. So. Uh, you don't really need to paddle the choss because there's some. If there's rain, then there's some really good rivers around. Um, you just have to work a bit harder for them. Usually, a bit more chasing and driving, and like constant refreshing of weather forecasts and stuff. So. I've seen it, it, now that I've got you on here. I've seen something on on YouTube that came up. They said the world's most dangerous river or something in the UK or Yorkshire or maybe somewhere like that. It's this weird, it's just like this weird little nothing river that goes through a, like a cow's field or something. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, I wonder if it's cauldron snout. It looks, it looks like nothing. It looks like class oh. one, but oh. apparently it's got some worlds, some swirly, uh -huh. Damn it. Oh, maybe not cauldron snout. That's definitely not flat. Because <laughs> now it'll drive me crazy if I don't if I don't get this. Because you probably you yeah, probably I'm went. Yeah, as well now actually. You you probably went and paddled it. I know it's in the UK. It's in um. It's called. They've got it listed as. I can't even say this. It's called the. Um, hold on, I'm gonna pull it up and let you see it. <laughs> Oh, the wolf. Have you ever heard of that? I've heard of it, but I didn't know it was dangerous. <clears throat> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Compared to what we normally paddle. <laughs> Look at the picture. <laughs> yeah. What did I do? Um, um, yeah. I, I have, you, you, have you heard of it? I've heard of it, but to be honest, I didn't think that there was anything very gnarly on it, but I could be wrong. Like, It's, I, it's called the, the wharf? Is that how you say that? Wolf. wolf. Okay, I'll just I'll just agree uh, that it's a wolf. But well, I'm not the best person to ask because I'm it's, like my, is my a river. So it, confused. <laughs> so listen to this: the 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 wharf is a river in Yorkshire, England, for much of its length of the country boundary of West Yorkshire. Are you familiar with this river? Um, I've heard of it. 
but I, I don't think I've ever actually paddled it. There's some really good stuff in Yorkshire, but um, yeah, I've not done the wharf, I don't think. And it's weird. It's like, it's, it's rated one of the world's most dangerous rivers. Is that not crazy? That's in Yorkshire. Crazy. Is that a posh area, Sal? Uh, no, not really. Yorkshire? Yes. <laughs> You're making it sound posher than it. Really good waterfall runs up there. That's the most dangerous river in the world. Well, I, I'll let him know that he's <laughs> the ultimate <laughs> badass. <laughs> yeah, if you go to, if you go to like uh, Google and type in world's most dangerous river, on the right-hand side, this river wharf t pops up. And it's it's insane to me. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, it looks class three at the most. Yeah. See, you don't need BC or whatever. You can just go to the wharf. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, you. <laughs> it's just crazy. In West Yorkshire, and I'm like, Yorkshire is just not known for its like insane stout rivers. And that's, I figured I would ask you. That's a real good secret. I'm not sure anyone is aware of that. <laughs> that well, they are now, Sal. They yeah, are now. Well, I'm yeah, put, yeah. Out the bag. Everyone is going to be And I think, I think one of the things was it's like people, it's mostly not kayakers. It's people have fallen in. And they're ranking it on how many people have fell in and drowned. It's on, there's some weird, like, vortex currents, the way it comes off the walls. I, there's a documentary on it. And how this came up for me was I was watching just some BBC documentary on YouTube. And it's like, world's most, that piqued my interest, world's most dangerous river. And, there, and apparently it's, it's like lots of fatalities, but it's mostly people falling in. Yeah. And unfortunately... Every summer, there just seem to be quite a few fatalities here in the UK. Um, and I said that they're pretty much always kind of holiday makers and tourists who, unfortunately, when it's nice and sunny, get in the river for a swim. But because they don't really understand the, the dynamics of the water and, and the like. The no nature. life vest, obviously. Yeah. And they're just getting in for a swim. And, and or sometimes like because it's so easy to buy like inflatable kayaks and things now um, and like going off little weirs and ledges and stuff like super fun, which some of them, some of them are, but some of them are pretty deadly. Like low head dams, yeah. Mm, yeah, and just like really closed in, the kind of thing that if you went in the water, and like, it would be a real bad time. So, yeah, unfortunately we have a few of those each year, really. Oh, wow. So how far are you away from Yorkshire? Um, Probably four hours. Oh, well, you could drive there tomorrow and check it out. Yeah. If there was any water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's rain fan, but yeah. It's probably just like a, a riverbed, right? Now. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> that's pretty good. How do you say it again? UK is like right now. <laughs> you say it the wolf? Wharf. 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 Like war. Yeah. But you definitely shouldn't like learn English from me. My accent is so confused. Oh, God. <laughs> When I was here. <laughs> Don't even start on accents. So I grew up in East Tennessee. So yeah, I'm exactly everything. I get messages on YouTube where people are like, hey, I'm learning English from listening to your videos. I'm like, don't. <laughs> yeah. Please not. Don't. <laughs> You'll be mispronouncing everything. Yeah, because I, I travel and even though people speak English, I still confuse them. Like they might speak it, English might be their second language, and they're like, "What um, you know?" Words like "y'all." When you say "y'all" here, yeah. and uh, yeah, and it's just they're like, "What y'all? What do you mean?" And they're it confused. So I have to try to, I have to try to talk more proper. Uh, my friends take the mic when I'm back in the UK after being in South America, uh, because I hang out with a lot of Americans through the winter. And I pick up all your little sayings, and then when I come back, everyone just laughs at me because they sound ridiculous. Oh, what's your favorite saying in America? Oh, uh, oh, I'll have to think about that one. Oh, come on. You got something. You got something funny. Okay, I'm going to have to think. I'll tell you, I'll tell you later when I talk. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You have it. Um, yeah, so, so on that, you go, so you go to South America usually in the winter. You, and what's your, what's your favorite river down there? In, mostly uh, Chile, right? Yeah, mostly Chile. I've been to Ecuador a couple of times and had awesome, awesome times there. Um, but yeah, Chile is more the norm. I'd say that's more like my kind of second home. Um, I would probably have to, oh, it's really tough. Like for special places and special times, I'd say the Claro. Um, the Rio just, Claro, right? Yeah, it's just like super special up there. Um, but like backyard, super fun, lots of laps, the Palguin. Uh, mm. But then the Futa Lefu is just like another world. Like when you head down there, you're out in the sticks. There's only paddlers around and 
it really does feel like a paddler's paradise like it's yeah it's just so different down there there's, wow, there's that's... nowhere else that i've ever been like it what boat do you usually take did you take the ripper um uh, when i was last there um i only had with me the the original 9r oh the 9r1 yeah which so is a really good boat yeah it's awesome it's a really good boat i would love to go back in the ripper i think that's that river in the ripper would just be absolute heaven yeah so, yeah super excited to get a ripper down there you do like you don't just do whitewater you do i've seen you in sea kayaks i've seen you in like canoes <laughs> i know what is it like so have you done like any expedition sea kayaking type deals yeah not like white water is definitely my thing that that's what really gets me excited mm -hmm. um, but when i'm in the uk like i said it kind of feels like you're hanging around waiting for rain a lot of the time so i like to keep busy um but i'm pretty much up for doing most outdoor stuff so um i was in pembrokeshire sea kayaking recently that was with steve who i do the expeditions mm -hmm. with um just him and a few of our friends just doing some exploring along the coast a bit of holidaying too um I've done a bit with my, my good friend Erin. She's an out-and-out sea kayaker. She's done some epic expeditions all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, and whenever we get together, we kind of mix things up. I take her river running. She takes me sea kayaking. Mm -hmm. And we just go and make some adventures, basically. Do you do you own a sea kayak? No. No, I just borrow. You just borrow just whatever. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. me. <laughs> I had one at one time, but I, I found that I don't. I didn't paddle it as much as I wanted to, so I ended up selling yeah. it. But and if anybody people, wanted to get... I'm not yeah. sure where I store it. I probably, like the house I'm at now, I've got like six kayaks here. <laughs> <laughs> and two bikes. <laughs> yeah, oh, do you, do you mountain bike or do you road bike? Which one? Um, I recently got into mountain biking and absolutely love it. Uh, but until then, I was just road, road biking. Uh, again, in the summer, uh, trying to find something to do, I cycled uh, from uh the orkney isles which is north of scotland uh to the isles of Scilly, which is right at the very bottom um i think it was a hundred no 1400 kilometers wow um, how long did that take and we did it over two weeks two weeks of just what would you do a day um usually between 100 to 150k i think 160 a day and then you would just fight would you camp or would you have yeah, did you have someone were. following you yeah um so we were doing like a bit of a documentary whilst we were doing it we were um interviewing people along the way that are doing like awesome things for the environment and for climate change and stuff so we were making a bit of a documentary interviewing them along the way um so yeah so we had a car and like obviously we didn't go in the car but uh, there was a film crew and stuff in there um but yeah, yeah, so always doing something kind of different when I'm back in the UK because I just want to keep busy, really. Yeah. Uh, and whitewater isn't always an option, so just do whatever we can. Yeah, it's the same way here. You know, it'll be really dry for a while yeah. or like even like, like winter times, there's no dam control or anything. So yeah. I, I'll do something like kayak fishing or I'll go I mountain know. biking, just something yeah. kind of like you. I just, I just want to be outdoors. I yeah. just want to be doing something outdoors. Yeah. You know, running and swimming are kind of my go-tos. If I can't kayak, I'm usually running or swimming there. Running. So, do you, do you have you ever done any of the like the like the races? What it like? Um, um, when I was younger, I used to. Do, do they call them Iron Man there? Like the Iron oh, Man? Yeah, yeah. You can do some epic stuff called like the Iron Man, which is just crazy. Like uh, racing, do, like um, running, swimming. Is, um, uh, like trail running. So I'll just pack a little backpack and go off for the day. Uh, usually along the coast and just see how much mileage I can cover kind of thing. Uh, and just make like a day of it, like a, a little mini adventure kind of thing. Uh, probably have a swim as well. And yeah. Stuff. In the, yeah. like in the ocean. How far are you away from the beach? Um, well, I swim at a place that's half an hour away here from here. Um, but if I travel a bit further, the beach is a, a lot nicer. So oh, really? A bit further, yeah. You mentioned Scotland a lot. How close are you to Scotland? Uh maybe like seven hours oh well that's not close <laughs> but for the uk it's not too bad <laughs> that's the whole country <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh, i spend a lot of my time over in devon and cornwall on the south coast there and uh, my favorite river is in devon uh, and there's loads of really nice coast around there as well so yeah it's just super fun uh it's kind of like low volume and unless it rains a lot then it's it's pretty exciting big volume 
But uh, yeah, it's just super fun and one of those rivers that you can just lap all day. Is it what like what do you mean by lap? So you can walk back up and do it again? Uh, you can, but that would take a really long time. So we we usually just drive back up. People weren't like drive, sharing cars and stuff. We were walking back up, but uh, you can only really get like one or two laps in a day. If you do yeah, that. there's a lot of those here in the southeast. Those runs where you could just sit there and just lap them, and then just lap till you get tired and stop doing them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite? Well, like you, you in Scotland, do you paddle a lot in Scotland? Um, I haven't done for a few years, but I'm planning on going back this fall. Um, there's there's one area um, like Fort William, Glencoe, kind of way like southwest, which are really popular. Mm -hmm. And if people were going kayaking in Scotland, they'd probably mostly all head there. Um, but there is a lot of paddling to be done all over Scotland, really. Uh, so and I'm keen to go kind of test some of it out a bit more. Yeah, and the the rivers there are like that small, like, manky type runs too. <laughs> that, that's what it looks like to me, right? Uh, yeah, they're definitely kind of like your lower volume, like smaller creeks and stuff. Uh, there are some that you would perhaps say were manky, but then there's some really cool ones as well. I forgot. Um, what what did you say? That Charles? Charles? What did you call them? Oh, Chuss. 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 <laughs> I would love to travel and just get on a little moped and drive across all of it. <laughs> Have a little trailer for your kayak. Yeah. Oh, pull in a little trailer in the back. Yeah. Because <laughs> you could go like 10 different countries over there in like just a few weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was in Wales yesterday. <laughs> Let's see. There you go. Hey, are you? so it's okay for you guys to travel back and forth, right? Yes, it is now. Um, it hasn't been for like a a lot of the year it wasn't able, like possible to but now we can again which is cool yeah awesome. a lot of my friends live on that side of the border so uh i'm pretty glad about that and it means i can go paddling over there do you need a passport to go to wales no <laughs> really hmm. do you need a passport for scotland no nope. is it why is that uh, it, even though it's different country you don't need a passport when you travel like that what about to go to france or somewhere yeah, to go over to Europe, you do. Um, and that's, like, particularly so now because of Brexit, because we're, we're not part of the European Union. Mm. Uh, but, like, obviously, Scotland and Wales and England are all part of the UK. So travel between there is super easy. Um, but, yeah, now to go over to France, um, we need a few more permissions and things. Oh, you got to get a stamp, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I could mention that I'm writing my first book. Uh, that's my kind of, there's a few things on, so I, I write um, for a couple of magazines and things, um, kind of uh, various kind of outdoors or adventure magazines, um, and obviously a few blogs here and there for kind of sponsors and that, but I am currently working on my first book. Um, your first? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, it's always the best, your fir you'll never forget your first, it's always the best. <laughs> that one's the most special. <laughs> Where's, uh, what's the name of it? Uh be confirmed that's not the name i would i just don't know the name of the book yet oh you haven't named it yet are no, you uh no. yeah I think, um, i'm gonna write it first um i i'm it's super early days uh, still i've only written a couple of well that's times. awesome what uh do you have an idea or is this top, top secret too uh, it's a bit of a secret partly because i'm still working it out but um no i have a really like in my mind, I, I already have a, a structure and kind of as you start writing, you, you kind of sway off that structure and um, start to find that it's going off in different directions, which has been kind of cool, actually. Um, I think that's been making it more interesting. Fiction or nonfiction? Uh, nonfiction. Mm. Is it going to be about your travel? Yeah, mostly. Great. Okay. I love books like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's more interesting. Is it going to be like a, like a, a biography, like autobiography or? Yeah, yeah. Um, just on like um, one particular kind of significant journey for me um, and how it, it kind of shaped um, future kind of journeys and things too. I will definitely um, entertain it only if it's an audio book. Okay, yeah. <laughs> just for you, I will record it all by voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that plus um, quite a lot of travel means that my voice is just all over the place. And even when I go back to my hometown, people are like, where are you from? <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be interesting, uh, your book on audio. And then I could drive <laughs> to the river with it blasting. I'm coming to the States next year. Is it your first time in the U.S.? Uh, no, but this will be, this will be the best time. 
it's always the best time. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep hearing awesome stuff about padding over there. Yeah, so I'm uh, gonna see if it's as good as everyone keeps saying. <laughs> it's uh, regional dependent. How about that? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I guess like over there. <laughs> um, and it depends who you speak to, whether you're speaking to people in the southwest or the southeast. Yeah, the, you got the south. About the other place. Yeah, the yeah you talk to them in the the Pacific Northwest and then the Southeast is drastically different. They're all different. Yeah, it's quite funny. <laughs> yeah, the good spot to look for is Colorado, right in the middle. Yeah. You go to Colorado, no matter what, you're in between both of them. All right, well, Sal, um, it, yeah. So, how can people get a hold of you here? So, I guess just Instagram, Facebook. You got a YouTube channel too, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, my YouTube channel is still pretty small, but I, I do intend to put more on it um, in the coming weeks. But yeah, I guess Instagram is probably the thing I kind of share majority of what I'm up to and things on there. So yeah, well, that, reach out. I, I'm super what busy. is it? Sal Montgomery? Yeah, Sal Montgomery. Sal um, Montgomery on Instagram. You know, you can live vicariously through through like travelers like yourself. I'm like, oh, wow, what? <laughs> What is she doing over there? Wow, look at that. Weirdo doing right now. Uh, I, yeah, I wouldn't say weirdo. <laughs> All right, Sal. Well, I'll let you get off here. I appreciate you coming on, and um, thanks for talking to me, and it's been it's been a pleasure. Thank so, you so much. Um, I right. look forward to with you one day. All right. All right, bye. Bye.